This dude was unbelievable, man. How, was how unbelievable. so? Because he could do everything. I mean, I, you know, um, I think I told him one time, I said, bro, you could do everything I could do on the court, but you were 6'10". <laughs> <laughs> Literally everything. I mean, he had no weaknesses, offensively or defensively. That was the late great Kobe Bryant speaking glowingly about a guy who played the same position he did. And if we come to learn anything about the Mamba, he never speaks highly of any of his peers the way he was describing a guy who at one point was neck and neck with Kobe Bryant in the best player in the world conversation in the early 2000s. If you haven't guessed already who Kobe was gushing praise about, he was talking about Tracy McGrady, the literal poster child for every Hooper's dream skill set, height, athleticism, scoring ability. That was T-Mac all wrapped in one. And when Kobe says that T-Mac was by far his toughest cover, you believe him. Who's the toughest guy you ever played against? Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys, but the guy that always gave me the most problems actually was Tracy McGrady. His talent couldn't be denied. He was a 6'8", 6'9", wing who literally had every tool in his toolbox that a coach could ever want in a player. The crossover, the mid-range, the three ball, finishing around the basket, literally everything. And the thing that I saw in him that I loved about him in high school was that he did everything so easily. And it gave the appearance that he was nonchalant, he didn't care, but when you really broke it down on film, he was fast, he was athletic, he was quick. So consequently, he would always be there waiting and, and look like he was just, <laughs> you, know, you know. I mean, he, he was never out of position. Offensively, you know, his moves were quick but they were slow because he was that fast. Think about it for a second. Can you think of any 6'8", 6'9", shooting guard in the history of basketball with that deep of an offensive bag? Now, I'm not putting T-Mac on the level of Mike or Kobe regarding rank, but seriously, at the peak of his powers, T-Mac was essentially a 6'9", Kobe, trust me. Kobe will be the first to say that. And speaking of T-Mac's peak, I don't think many people know the kind of offensive force this man was in the earlier part of his career. The 2002 season for T-Mac wasn't just the best season of his career. It's arguably the greatest offensive season ever put together. 32 points per game with 42 points per 100 possessions. That number per 100 possessions outdid the next highest score per 100 possessions by over four points. In fact, the next closest was Shaq. And Shaq was the only dominating force in the NBA at the time. If we take a look at all the other advanced stats, and this is truly the remarkable part, T-Mac led the league in the following advanced analytics. Win shares per 48, box plus minus, offensive box plus minus, value over replacement player, and was second in the NBA in overall win shares to only Tim Duncan. He became just a second player in NBA history at the time to finish a season with at least 30% usage rate and assist rate and still lead the NBA in scoring. The only guy to ever do that before him was none other than Michael Jordan. The the next guy to carry that kind of offensive load and still put up at least 30 points a night was James Harden when he tallied a usage rate of 36% and an assist rate of an astonishing 45% during the 2017 season. This means that it took 15 years before the league saw another player produce at the level T-Mac produced at during the 2002 season. Wild. But incredibly, that's the silver lining to all this. The day he had 62, see he had 62, I think he missed 10 or 12 free throws. That That's game. crazy. We, those ones hurt. He was, he was hitting us with the same. Uh, pop. We put our four man on him. We put our five man on him. We doubled him with our four and our five. He was shooting over all of it. Like it was just, it was unbelievable. Like yo, this dude is crazy. Like he's just, we got you know Brendan Brendan Haywood seven seven foot, shooting arm over and him. <laughs> Jared Jeffrey six eleven long arm. Too, like, like they were too small. T-Mac had a historic 2002 season and did something very few guys have ever done in professional basketball. And though he had other seasons in which he was no doubt one of the five or 10 best players in the league, T-Mac didn't sustain that peak level for that long. Why? Well, there's only one thing that can stop a man so supremely gifted, injuries, and a whole lot of them.
At 23 years old, T-Mac already entered the conversation of the best player in the world, and people seriously debated if he was better at the age 23 than even Michael Jordan was at the same age. What if someone told you in 2003, after winning his first scoring title, that Tracy McGrady would be a shell of himself in four years? I would probably say, yeah, and Michael Jordan is going to unretire and win another MVP. It ain't happening. But the truth is, that's exactly what happened. One injury led to another. It started with back spasms T-Mac began dealing with during parts of the 2004 season. Things only began to get worse when T-Mac hurt his back during practice to start the 2005 season. Just a day later, it was announced that he would miss three weeks once the extent of the injury became clearer. When he tried to play with a bad back against the Denver Nuggets a couple months later, it got so bad that T-Mac collapsed in pain and was taken straight to the hospital. He literally couldn't move. It all started going downhill. T-Mac played in just 47 games in 2005. He was reasonably healthy in 2006, but the back problems were still nothing to sneeze at. He didn't look like the same player anymore either. Think about that. He didn't look like the same transcendent player he looked like just a few years earlier. He was still just 26 years old. But he's as talented as any player I've ever seen. But I don't think that ever, that fire ever manifested itself. You know, hmm. I mean, it's interesting. You, in, in touching on what you said, Isaiah, the demeanor, the look, the appearance that he's not trying hard. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you lead the league in scoring if you, if you don't have a little bit of a fire. As he did twice. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, think, I think the problem was we just, it just was, I mean, I was hurt. I think it would have helped as an older player to sort of help show him a little bit, you know, how to do things. He was, he was 21 when he went to Orlando and just yeah. took off. Mm -hmm. So he was still young. And the team wasn't that great. And I think a lot of it was frustration. I think a lot of it was he just didn't know really what to do or how to conduct himself maybe as a teammate, as a leader. Uh, but in terms of, like you said, in terms of talent, and going out and scoring like he scored, like you have to have a little bit of a fire. As the back spasms persisted, the injury list continued to grow. It was knees, ankles, always something going on. His play lacked fun in the fans' eyes, and he wasn't having any fun playing. T-Mac wasn't the only one tired of all the injuries and the missed time. So was his head coach, Rick Adelman. He's been hurt for over a year. The thing that people want to write about is who he was two years ago, and he isn't that right now. If that doesn't scream trouble, I don't know what does. Not too long after that, T-Mac took an indefinite leave from the team, and that leave turned into saying goodbye to NBA stardom, because he started just 24 games the following season before playing a couple ceremonial seasons for middling teams like the Detroit Pistons and Atlanta Hawks. Just a few seasons can make all the difference in the world. He went from being arguably the greatest player in the world, not named Shaq in 2002, to an afterthought just few years later. And all of this happened in just his mid to late 20s. 20s! Penny Hardaway. Grant Hill, Derrick Rose. You can make your pick for the most fascinating what if story in NBA history, but I don't know, man. T Mac, dare I say, had an outside shot of becoming the GOAT. Certainly could have been the greatest scorer of his generation. And bro, can you imagine what the T Mac Kobe debate for the best player in the NBA would have been like in the 2000s if T Mac escaped all the injuries? It could have been the new age bird magic debate. T Mac was it. I'm ready for the win. Yes! Tracy McGrady with an incredible performance down the stretch.